total of three and a half pages consisting of an entirely self-contained scene was scrapped. This does not sound like much, but does represent a notable section of screen time, especially since the complete script ran to a total of only 42 pages, the shortest of the series, and was 12 pages under the average length of a television script. This unshot sequence was to have taken place immediately after Number Six's visit to Barney's boxing booth. Originally, Killer Kominsky instructs him to go to a sideshow consisting of a replica of the Hampton Court Palace maze. He quickly finds the maze in question, and the following bizarre sequence unfolds. <laughs> Number six enters the first avenue of the maze. Everything seems to look innocent enough, but he is unprepared for what awaits him round the next corner. The well-clipped hedges have suddenly been replaced with tropical vegetation. Exotic cries and screeches fill the air, echoing as if in a vast room. He is in a tropical rainforest. Before long, he is under attack from a New Guinean headhunter, brandishing a deadly knife. Number six makes short work of the native, disarming him of the knife in the process. Continuing on his exploration of the forest, Number six is stopped in his tracks by the roar of a ferocious lion, which turns out to be a mild-mannered tabby cat. Now, even deeper into the forest, he is instructed by a passing parrot to turn 30 degrees left. With nothing to lose, number six follows the parrot's directions and finds himself back in the maze. He continues to tread carefully, paying little attention to the gardener spraying insecticide onto the maze's well-clipped hedges. As he draws closer, the gardener turns, revealing a second container on his back labelled Homicide. The gardener tries to spray number six, but using the knife he purloined from the native, our hero knocks his assailant to the ground and piercing one of the pressurised canisters sends him shooting off into the distance like a rocket. As he regains his composure, number six becomes aware that somebody is standing over him. He is not immediately concerned that the person is over 12 feet tall and dressed as a clown. It's the fact that he's armed with a submachine gun. A chase ensues in the maze, with number six ducking and diving to escape the bullets. And the stilt walker using his elevated position to keep track of his quarry. Before long, number six stumbles across the center of the maze, where he finds suitable cover to hide from his pursuer. Unable to locate number six, the stilt walker is also unaware of what is happening at his feet. Number six, now desperate to leave the maze, hacks his way through the nearest hedge using the headhunter's deadly knife. To his surprise, he finds himself back in the fairground, where he's towed off by a disapproving mother. The little boy she has in tow is holding a balloon on which there is a message directing him to the tunnel of love. This unshot sequence is somewhat out of character with the rest of the episode. It is not Sonia, but an apparent army of helpers testing number six to the limits. In fact, she did not even appear in the scene. The sets required to make the sequence convincing, although not individually extravagant, would as a whole have been relatively expensive given their limited on-screen time. Maybe it isn't so surprising that it was decided not to shoot them.